but welcome to a new Harry's Garage and today's car is the Lotus Esprit Turbo HC you see behind me 1987 car and a car I've owned for a few months now and I've been looking at the Esprit for years almost decades I sort of felt it should be in the collection but from a time at Evo we drove a lot of Esprits there I never quite gelled with the car I'm not sure why but we we tested the, uh, when the V8 came in and it, it just seemed to lag behind what um, Ferrari were offering at the time, etc. It's sort of from a previous age. And then recently I thought, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get a, a Lotus Europa to go beside my uh, Lotus Land Sprint. I, I sort of have a love of Colin Chapman and um, what he did and how he created amazing cars from fairly mundane parts. I mean, he was a, a bit of a genius, as we all know. And then I got in there and it just felt awkward and old, the Europa, and it didn't really, I've just preferred the Land Sprint. Then I thought, well, why don't I look at the earlier Esprit, something, a car that somehow had missed me by. I, I drove a S1, uh, the really early one, loved the interior, but loved nothing else about it. Um, it sort of rattled, it had a lot of noise about it, and they, their parts were tricky on it, so I sort of dismissed it. But I'd never looked at the turbo until recently. And it struck me that this is Colin Chapman's last car. He sadly died in 1982, and the first um, Spree Turbo came out in 1981. So he was right there at the beginning. And if you delve into the history books, they made sure this car was really special, a really top turbo, because uh, turbo was new in the late 70s, 80s, and they did a fantastic job. Anyway, so that's the background. Let's go and have a look at it in more detail. So the HC came out at the very last of the Gisari before they went to the Peter Stevens design car in late 87. This car dates March 87 and it was the final variant and basically it was the regular um, turbo, Spree turbo, but with a new updated engine, a bit more power, and it was the engine that then went into the Peter Stevens uh, Esprit from launch. So it, it has um, quite a lot of difference. We'll have a look when we get um, actually look at the engine. But at the front, you can tell the difference because it has a bigger scoop under the bumper. Um, normally it's vertical stays. They've gone on this later version. And they're rare cars. They think they made about 308 actual uh, turbo HCs but that includes the injected version for the, um, the states and they had more cars going over there than anywhere else so nobody knows the split but the 308 I would suggest there's about 200 went to the states that means there's around 108 or thereabouts of the carburetor the higher power version which is this one and if you want a white one um, with the red interior as this one is, this is the only one in existence. So they're really rare cars, which you don't discover until you start trying to buy an HC version. So before they introduced uh, the Spree Turbo 1981, Colin Chapman went to Desario and asked him how he could do a more aggressive looking Esprit because the S1 and S2 were normally aspirated. They had the two litre engines, about 160 horsepower. So he went back and onto the drawing board and added, there's a deeper front air dam as you'd normally do. You have these side skirts coming down the side of the car as well. And there's a scoop at the back that feeds air up to the, into the engine. And then at the rear, he had this much more aggressive rear spoiler, as you can see here. And instead of having a plain uh, glass window, he had these slats here, these matte black slats here. And, um, when the first car arrived at Heffel, um, they started uh, testing it and they felt it actually um, wasn't quite as stable at speed as they thought. They, they did a wind tunnel test on it and did some aero on it and discovered, in actual fact, that rear spoiler was way too aggressive, but they loved the look of it. And they either had to sort of put even deeper down at the front, but they didn't want to do that. So what Lotus did sneakily without um, sort of anyone really noticing, they added this little spoiler here, just at the top of the roof here. And that spoiler then messes up the air. And so the rear spoiler now does nothing. And they had perfectly balanced car again. So, so the rear spoiler on this is a bit like the Countach, is there for show and actually doesn't do an awful lot because it, this little thing added by Lotus spoils the air before it gets there. Front of the Esprit, you get a sort of boot, but uh, all it really contains, there's a spare tire, small spare tire jack, um, tools are there, but you can just hide a few things in there if you want. But the main boot is in the back. This is quite fun because it has um, quite aggressive struts, as you can see. So it pops up like that. And then you get another boot in here 
And it's all slightly bizarre in here that you have one back window there. The engine has this cover on it. And then there is another back window hiding in there. And that's so that when the water goes under the, um, if it goes under those slats over the back, it then forms around here and drains away. But the cooling of the engine sort of suck, it can, it can vent through this that then goes through the vent, but it keeps this sort of sealed. Now to look at the engine, I have to do this. Lift this up, and there you go. All exposed. Now, it's an amazingly tight little um, engine bay in here. Uh, it's 2.2 litre uh, in this installation. When they introduced the turbo, they, um, they went from 2 litres to 2.2. And at launch, it was um, 210 horsepower, 200 uh, pound foot of um, torque. And it's such a simple um, installation. The HC introduced is high compression, what it stands for. It went from 7.5 to 8 um, compression ratio. It actually got a different turbo. Um, it got a slightly smaller turbo to spin up quicker. And then it goes through, and it's still on carburetors, this car. Uh, and the Delorto carbs on this um, went from 40 to 45 with the HC. And the net effect was horsepower didn't go up much, 215 horsepower, but torque went up from 200 to 220 pound foot of torque. But it's such a lightweight little insulation. There is no intercooler, no nothing. The turbo sits there and it blows straight into the carburetors. And what uh, Colin Chapman and Mike Kimberley at the time, what they're trying to do is reduce turbo lag. And so that's why they went for this system. And what they're trying to do is to get the individual butterflies of the carburetor as close to the cylinder head as they could. So they decided that's where the lag comes from. When you put, um, put your foot down, the throttle uh, opens and there's this lag of all this air that then has to go into the cylinder head, but not so on this insulation. And it's this really tight little um, inlet um, manifold until it goes straight into the head. It's actually got on the HC, um, it's got extra porting on the head as well and a different exhaust manifold, all to um, reduce lag. And it's a spectacular little unit. And it sort of helped because the car is so light, which we'll go into when we get out to drive. But um, it's a really sweet a little gem of an engine. It might be four cylinders, but it's super smooth and very, very clever. Okay, other things on this spree, you have uh, two fuel um, tanks on it. So you have a filler this side and you have a filler the other side. And remarkably, to combine, they hold 18.9 gallons, 89 litres or thereabouts. Because it's relatively economical, it's in mid-20s, um, you get a 400 plus mile range. Quite amazing for a car like this. And you get a half decent boot. Um, you get this space here, sits above the exhaust. You always got to watch, it might get a bit warm in there. And you've got the front boot. Anyway, enough of the detail. I'm going to put the engine cover back on and let's go outside and I'll show you how it drives. Here we are. Now, first thing to say, it's quite snug in here. Um, it's it's something oh, something um, that goes with the territory really with lotuses um, that they are always made sort of just above Colin Chapman size and he was um, he wasn't the tallest man uh, so if you're over six foot I'm six one six two I'm just there but I looked for one with the glass roof because that just gives you a little bit of extra headroom. The plus thing on the HC model is you actually get um, seats that recline. Um, so you actually, normally they're fixed backs and you just go up. And the wheel is so offset, it's a peculiar wheel. If you look at the distance from my fingers there, it's about that much. If I do the same the same side, look how far away it is from the dash. So very offset, comes out the middle of the dash and then sort of goes off this angle. And then the pedals are quite tight as well. And I have to think about the shoes I wear when I drive this car. Um, it's the same on the Elan as well. And uh, Chapman said, well, no one drives my car in hobnail boots. Well, it's, quite, it's quite warm today. We're not used to this in the UK this year. It's been a rubbish winter. That's why it's been a bit slow on vids. Anyway, I digress. The other thing the HC got was a different sort of trim. Um, if you look at early versions of the 
uh, Gijaro um, tur- uh, Spree Turbo, they're sort of very lavish sort of leather and it looks sort of worn out. It's like those sofas you see in sitcoms and things. It's all very padded and wrinkly and odd and looks knackered from the day it's delivered, but it was a style, unfortunately, in the early 80s. This, slightly more subdued. Yes, it's red, but it's a subdued red and there's no real panic because this is the only one in this colour combination. This hasn't got the lever option. You could have um, full lever. This has got partial lever. And off you go. I've seen about the space in it. It's actually better than my Countach. So I think I'm just conditioned to cars that are a little bit tight. Knees, knees are up here, but I'm fine on head, elbow, etc. And you'll see in a moment when we get some better roads, yeah, you forget all about the driving position because there's some other highlights to enjoy. First thing you notice when you put away, there's no power steering, as you might expect on a car like this. Just at town speeds, you just think, oh, just gives you that sort of initial surprise. But actually on the underway, it's not too bad. Tires on this car aren't huge, actually. 195, 60, 15s at the front, um, 235. 60 um, 15s at the back so yeah really not that big in fact it's so warm today i'm just going to pull over here because this great thing about this car is we have a roof that opens and there we are it's got a lovely that's just sort of a midway position like that and that has actually adds another highlight as you'll see in a moment about the engine it has a distinct characteristic that uh, having the roof open like that gives you better access to ride at this speed so a bit lumpier than you expect from a Lotus it's only at town speed uh, just not you know this is a rubbish bit of road anyway but um, yeah it's just it's just slightly lumpy at lower speeds but then as soon as you get going it's absolutely fine On a, on a Saturday because I wanted to catch the decent weather. We've waited weeks to do this video. Finally, we can do it. There you go. One of the wonderful characteristics of this car is that turbo whistle and then the wastegate um, shattering as you just let come off the throttle. It just reminds me of another age just hearing it. But there it is, yeah, and it's particularly, no, you notice it with the roof closed as well, but with it open, yeah, it's very noticeable. There we go. And immediately as you get underway, you realise how light this car is. Uh, looking at the road test, I mean, it felt light, and push, just pushing it, you said, God, this is light. Look at the road tests when they actually used to weigh cars, uh, auto car and motor tests. And this car, ready to go, 1,146 kilos. That is remarkably light. Thinking what, you know, 215 horsepower. The performance figures, they don't, I know they're okay. I mean, it's, it's five point something to 60, 14 point something to 100. But when you're that sort of weight, it actually makes quite a difference depending on how many people are in the car. So all performance tests are always done with two people in the car, and normally a full tank of fuel. So you've got um, 89 litres of fuel, two people. That's an extra, what is it, 150, 160 kilos over what I'm running now. I've got about just under half a tank. And so it really feels, yeah, really quite snappy when you're on your own. Yeah, just while we're sitting in traffic in Burford, I'll give you a little bit more history about this car. Um, Looking for an HC, as I say, it's it's hard to find one with only 100 and some uh, produced. And then this one was for sale at uh, Paul Matty Sports Car. And it has a remarkable history because um, a gentleman bought it in March 1987 and then kept it all the way into 2016. So he owned it for the vast majority of its life. There was another guy who bought it then and then um, immediately sold it on to Paul Matty. Unfortunately, so I'm sort of the, the third owner, but the second owner never actually drove it. Uh, and it's only done, 
well, it had done 19,000 miles when I um, fought, first bought it. It's now on 20,500 miles because I've actually, since it's arrived, it's become a bit of a favourite thing. I've done reasonable journeys in it. It's yeah, it's really quite comfy once you're yeah once you're in. Uh, it's really quite comfy in here. So yeah, quite a remarkable find. I haven't seen one with that sort of low mileage and one ownership. Um, I think another one for sale. Also, while we're crawling along, Lotus typical interiors are a bit of a parts bin special. So you sort of look around. I think there's bits of Maestro, I'm afraid. Remember that car? Um, so in the switch gear and things, there's the um, Marina with the Maxi uh, door handles as well. I also like the way you get um, two ashtrays, one in each door and a cigarette lighter in the door as well. Um, Connor Chapman was quite a smoker, so that you wouldn't expect anything less from a, from a Lotus of this period when he was around. Um, then this car's got air conditioning um, and a fancy for the time um, four speaker system which was standard fit ventilation is rubbish on uh, these earlier sprees your heater where you set it to hot and you do everything you can and it, it just trickles a little bit of hot air in it yeah that's normal sir they all do that sir air conditioning is better and I actually got some reasonable um, vents so you get quite a lot of cooling air in uh, but hot air is definitely at a premium. Right, lost the traffic. Still in a 30 zone. And we're out on the open road. Again, love the airiness with this roof as well. It's this open feel. And off we go. Oh, off we go. at low speeds this engine but once you rev it it's the sweetest of engines there's no harshness and there's this throttle response that you know yes it's turboed but it's not nothing like a 930 turbo a Porsche turbo or a Saab turbo of the period this is this just feels fine and then it adds some torque and actually they, it doesn't over boost. What they were clever is they didn't give it a massive turbo feel because the boost pressures are quite low. I think it was eight pounds, which is about 0.6 bar on the standard turbo. And on this model, it's um, 8.5, sorry, 9.5 psi, which is about uh, 0.65 bar or something like that. Most modern turbos are boosting at least to 0.8 or 1.2, 1.5 for a sort of performance car. Not so on this, it's lower boost and that means the gradual build of boost and it just feels, makes the engine that much more usable. You're not thinking I've got to be on boost or off boost, it's just, yeah, but very easy engine to use. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I am going to pull over here and take the roof off because it is a lovely day and it's just ace with the roof off a little spoiler um, you put on it uh, just above the head uh, windscreen gets rid of all the buffeting you've got to make the most of days like this Well worth searching if you're after one of these cars. Worth searching one out with the glass roof. It just adds to the car. Ah. So it's it's proper performance. Uh, really feels quite quick this car. And it's just made for a bit of road like this. I want to think back, the difference I find with this car compared to the later Esprits we used to drive at Evo, they just have a different feel. It feels bulkier, um, the, the generation of Esprit that was introduced in late 87, 88. And when I looked at the... 
When I looked at the stats, what I couldn't get over is the difference in weight between them. And the later Esprit had the same engine as this and a new shape, but they, when this was being built, they had an American version with injected engine and they had the European version or rest of the world. The new version came in, they did one version for the whole world. GM had um, owned Lotus at this point and they made it US federal friendly and then the rest of the world got that version too and the weight went rocketing up and if you look at a weight of um, the generation of speed that came after this same engine same um, as same horsepower as this but it weighs 1386 kilos it's 240 kilos heavier than the, the Shario uh, version I couldn't get over the difference in weight and that's what it sort of feels like behind the wheel there is a nimbleness to this um, it just it's a very impressive down a bit of road like this it's just made for it you hardly have any steering input you're constantly kicking yourself you should have taken the corners quicker and the other notable feature is the brakes are terrific really solid uh, pedal and just made for heel and towing front rear distribution weight is um, 42 front um, 58 rear percentage wise and when you're getting when you're trying to push it along it goes you in to push it because it's never doing anything that it shouldn't it utterly feels natural it feels utterly at ease when you take it at speed you don't suddenly discover it wants to understeer or it's a bit light in the rear if you go a bit heavy on the right it's absolutely with you and I think the secret is actually that four cylinder engine all aluminium super simple installation of the turbo um, the original spring when it first came out with nothing on it was a thousand sixty kilos to, for, so for this to be around 1140 1150 kilos only added about 90 kilos in its life and going turbocharged and it's just so faithful when you're actually pushing it on you're goading it so you want to drive it again so oh, I'm going to push it harder this time and all the controls are with, with you I'd also love the way it's got five speed gearbox but fifth marked on here is overdrive oh it's surplus you don't want to go cruising in this car you want to rag it and uh, I just didn't expect I would enjoy a spree as much as this car. There you go. It's just lovely to discover. I just, why did I wait decades to try one out? I've got a time to make up though. And I say, with the roof open, very little buffeting. I'm just on the speed limit at the moment, around 60 miles an hour. Very civilized roof open. Anyway, some of my favorite bench just coming down here. So I'm going to do that. But it's, the other lovely thing about it, 2.8 turns lots to lot, doesn't feel super nervous, very faithful steering. And you just nudge it round. Nose. I, I used to have a 308, as you probably remember, the glass fiber 308. That had an edginess to it. That felt nothing like as accomplished as this car. I had the, the early uh, smaller diameter wheels on that, whether that made a difference or not but I really wasn't impressed with the 308 chassis compared to this. It was okay, but it was short. It had a funny damping action. It was short wheelbase. This is sublime. And if you read back to the old stories, all the road testers used to say the same. This was regarded as the world's best chassis in its day. And they say, you have to put up with some of the Lotus um, idiosyncrasies, the tight cabin, the rubbish ventilation, etc. But the chassis on this, is world class and it still is today so yeah I was very surprised with the more I got to know this car the more I loved it it has serious amounts of grip when you you keep kicking yourself to say the smallest tyres but it just shows you don't have to be it's just a very sorted car there's no anti-roll bar at the back um, there's inboard brakes to get rid of the unsprung weight again they were introduced on the uh, Stevens uh, Esprit but it's it's all done it has that um, sense that essence of Chapman all the way through this car and yeah, I, 
I'm really surprised um, at how good it was, and I'm just kicking myself as I say for not getting to know it earlier. Also, I looked through the history files. DeLorean were trying to buy Lotus. Um, thank God they didn't. But um, chap when they joined the negotiations, he said you can buy Lotus, you can yeah, you can buy the cars car, but I'm keeping the Esprit for me. That's going to be my car. I'm going to continue making the Esprit so the deal never got done. That's how much Chapman loved this car. This just eats a road like this. It is mighty impressive. In fact, when I have been owned it for a bit, I've now decided this is actually in my top three cars. I can't get over how accomplished this thing is. If, you, if, you, if the last cars in the garage are the um, Project 7, because I was involved with its birth, and I kind of really love it for everything it does and using the Countach. I never thought I'd own a Countach. And now this is Spree. This is Spree is everything I want a Lotus to be. It's that giant killer. I think it looks super cool, the Desario looks. It's got loads of performance. It's usable, it's fun. And I just think it's come of age. So I am chuffed a bit. Yes, I paid quite a lot of money for this car, um, paid in the 40s, but I'm so happy because I, it's everything I hoped it would be. So there you go. It's a real surprise, um, this early version of Lotus Esprit Turbo. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.